Today's video is a bit of an overdue topic. We're going to talk about JFET current sources. And uh, for background, you may want to take a look at uh, our intro to field effect transistors, as well as the video I did several years ago on transistor current sources and mirrors. Oh, and also maybe take a look at the follow-up video I did here that addresses a measurement mistake I made in 190. Hopefully we won't make any of those in today's video. Well, I covered current sources and current mirrors pretty extensively in video 190, we really only talked about them in terms of bipolar junction transistors and not JFETs. And I wanted to cover the JFET current sources because we can actually make really super simple uh, current sources and current limiters with JFETs. Um, so uh, it's worth a topic on its own, even though there are some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the advantages of the JFET current sources is that they're super simple. Often just one or two parts, maybe three parts, to make a, a current source. And they have pretty decent output impedance. The disadvantage, though, is that there can be a lot of part-to-part -part variation. But if you're doing just a simple one-off project, it might be a nice, uh, simple solution for you. Also, the maximum current with JFET current sources is limited to the or IDSS. So we'll take a look at that. And also, the, v, the drain to source voltage across the current sources needs to be relatively large, uh, typically about one to one and a half times the pinch off voltage for the JFET. So let's take a look at that as well. But before we get started, just a quick review on uh, the JFET characteristic curves. Now, you may remember from the basics of the uh, field effect transistor video that JFETs are depletion mode devices, meaning when there is no voltage across the gate to source, uh, the drain current is going to be at its highest. And when we start bringing the gate voltage down below the source voltage, then we start pinching off the channel and the current drops more and more and more. As the, the drain to source voltage gets higher, you reach a point where the uh, current in the drain is really uh, not proportional to the drain to source voltage anymore and it approximates essentially a fixed current at a given gate to source voltage. Let's take a look, quick look at that on the curve tracer. So we've got a JFET hooked up into the curve tracer here, and if we just take a look at with VGS equal to zero volts, we can kind of see that um, that characteristic where we kind of come up and basically go constant current. Once in this case we get you know five or six volts or so across the drain to source, we're essentially at a constant current. Now as we start bringing the gate voltage below the source voltage, we'll see the drain current getting lower and lower. We'll start off by adding just a single step here. That's with VGS equal to minus 0.5 volts. You can see we have got a lower drain current. And as we add steps here, we go from minus 0.5 to minus 1, minus 1.5, minus 2, minus 2.5, minus 3, minus 3.5, minus 4. We're just about pinched off. And at minus 4.5 volts, we're essentially along the bottom of the trace here, the bottom of the display. So that means that the pinch off voltage for this particular JFET is about minus 4.5 volts. Let's compare that to the datasheet specs. Uh, while we're looking at that, let's also look at IDSS in the datasheet. Because if we look here, we're at 5 millivolts of division, so that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, so a little over 40 millivolt, milliamps. Uh, we'll call that the IDSS value. Again, let's compare that to the datasheet spec. And the JFET I happen to be using in these experiments is the J310, just simply because I have a bag of them here, so I've got a lot to play with. Let's take a quick look at some of the specs to confirm what we saw on the curve tracer. Now first, looking at the off characteristics, uh, the gate source cutoff voltage with a VDS of 10 volts. Uh, it says it's for a J310 is going to be between minus 2 and minus 6.5. And the curve tracer told us for this particular device I'm looking at it was at, at minus 4.5, which is you know kind of almost right in the middle there. So the next thing we'll take a look at is IDSS, and that's the zero gate voltage drain current, which is when that, that drain current is going to be the highest. Again, for the J310, 24 to 60 milliamps, and we measured just a little over 40 milliamps on that device in the curve tracer. So again, right in the middle of that spec. So the simplest possible current source is to simply short the gate to the source. That's going to guarantee a VGS is zero volts and the current is going to get limited to essentially IDSS. That's kind of that first curve we saw before we started changing gate to source voltage. And again we need the drain to source to be about one to one and a half times the pinch off voltage or the, the cutoff voltage 
to ensure that we're reasonably constant uh, with that IDSS. The test circuit we'll use here on the bench is actually pretty simple. We've got a variable power supply, we'll have a voltmeter to accurately measure that power supply voltage, and we've got our test device with an ammeter in series with the drain. And for those of you that are playing along at home, and I hope it's a lot of you, uh, here's the hookup uh, between my power supply uh, and the voltmeter and the ammeter. So with the power supply, we've got the negative going down to our device under test uh, down here at the bottom, as well as going into the voltmeter to measure the voltage. We've got the positive going into the voltmeter to measure the voltage. And then that positive source is going into the ammeter, out of the ammeter again to our device under test. It's pretty simple. Now the exercise uh, that you can follow along at home here is, is make notes of how much current you get at various supply voltages, particularly when you get up past this knee, how much of a change in current do you get you know, for changes in supply voltage to see how good of a current source it is. It's also a measure of how good the output impedance is. Again, a current source you want a very high output impedance, meaning you, do, meaning you don't want a current change as the voltage across that uh, device changes. Okay, I will mention that the device that I'm testing uh, in the fixture here is different from the device that is in the f test fixture of the current source. So IDSS for this device is likely going to be different. And that actually brings up a good point, is that that's one of the downsides of uh, these JFET current sources, is that the parameter of IDSS can vary quite a lot uh, from device to device. In fact, you saw in the data sheet that IDSS for th this particular dev device could be anywhere between 24 milliamps and 60 milliamps. So that's quite a variation. Again, fine for one-off projects, but a little bit tougher to use if you want to build something that you want to make a lot of. Okay, so down here on the bottom is our voltmeter that's measuring the voltage that's going to be put across our current source connected JFET. And then the meter on top is measuring the current through that. So as we bring our supply voltage up, so you got one volt here, we got about 18 milliamps of, uh, of current. Uh, two volts, we're at about 28 milliamps. Uh, three volts, about 33 milliamps. Four volts, we're about 34.7. Uh, that's 5 volts, 35 milliamps, uh, 6 volts, about that 35 milliamps, a little bit less. We had a little bit of thermal heating here, so that's changing the current a little bit. And we can see once we got it past about 4, 4.5 volts, we're st selling relatively constant here. If I even go up to uh, so there's, you know, 12 volts being applied to the device, I'm at 33 milli milliamps. Now it's come down a little bit because uh, we've actually are uh, heating up the device. It's dissipating you know, some power, so as it gets heated up, the current source is going to change a little bit. But if we get back down to that eight or nine volts here, again, we're sitting pretty constant. Now this is a, an interesting way to look at this. If we go, say, at, at nine volts across the device, we're at 32.34, 35, 32, something like that. If I go up to 10 volts, a one volt change, we haven't really seen much of a change here. So we're seeing, you know, maybe 30 or 40 microamps of change when I step up and down between 9 and 10 volts. So keep that in mind, about, again, probably a 30 to 40 microamp change as I go up and down by that 1 volt. Now by adding one resistor, we can actually vary the current that we get in this JFET current source. This resistor essentially adds a little bit of negative feedback, because as we bring up VDD and the current starts increasing, we're generating a voltage drop across this resistor, which tends to make VGS more negative. So it tends to bring us down from our IDSS curve down to the next lower step, or you know, going working our way down that family of curves. So that negative feedback tends to reduce the current, makes it a little bit more stable. And also by making this a variable resistor, we can now create a current source that is variable. So in my case, I've just put a little resistor substitution box uh, that I'm going to use in series with this uh, circuit. And let's take a look at the effect on the meters. Okay, let's bring the voltage back up here again to, you know, say, oh, there's six, seven, let's be working at nine volts before. There we are again at nine volts. And let's, let's add some resistance in here. So I'll go from nothing, I just added 100 ohms in series with the source, and we drop down to about 14 milliamps. If I go add another 100 ohms, make it 200 ohms in series, now I've dropped down to 9.4, about 9.5 uh, milliamps. 300 ohms, we're at 7 milliamps. 
So we can see as we increase that resistor value, we're reducing the amount of current we have. So by making that a variable resistor, we can again have a variable current source. Now let's take a look at what happens when I reduce the, or change the voltage, how much change do we get in current? So if I go from 9 to 10 volts, I'm going to go from, say, 7.15 milliamps, 7.16 milliamps. So I'm getting about a 10 microamp change with that 1 volt change here. So it's probably about the same percentage as we're doing with that with the undegenerated case. But you can kind of see we're still going to get some variation, but it's still a pretty decent current source. Even if I go from 9 volts you know, to, say, 12 volts, we're still sitting at about a uh, little over 7 milliamps of current. So again, a pretty decent, uh, relatively stable current source for you. But now something that you can vary by simply varying a single resistor in a two-component circuit. Now the reason we were seeing a change in the current source value when we changed the voltage is because, we're again, we're working on one of these curves. And it's not perfectly flat. It's got a little bit of a tilt to it. So a small change in VDS, even on this portion of the curve, gives you a, a, a very small change in that current. Again, that's, it's a measure of the output resistance or output impedance. Uh, there is something we can actually do about that and make this even a more ideal current source where you have less of a variation by flattening this curve out. Let's take a look at that variation to the circuit. By adding a second JFET connected in this way, where it's essentially a cast code circuit, uh, this is my, the original current source that I showed above with the resistor to change its value. But now I've connected another JFET in series, okay, drain going to source, okay, and we're going to measure the current, you know, essentially at this point, and we're going to take our gate and connect it down to the source down here of our current source device. Now what this is going to do is ensure that the drain to source voltage of our current source device isn't going to change, because it's going to be limited by and fixed by the gate to source voltage of this guy, which is in series. This transistor sets the current source, the current value, so it's, and it means I've got a relatively constant current flowing through this device. That means I'm going to have a relatively constant VGS, therefore I'm going to have a VDS that's constant here that doesn't change much. And because I'm not changing VDS, I'm staying you know, essentially in one spot on this curve. So it's going to make for a much more stable current source with a much higher output impedance. So again, Q2 is really helping to keep VDS of Q1 relatively constant. So let's go take a look at the effect of that. So now with this cast coded device here, let's make that same 1 volt change to the supply voltage and see how much of a current change we actually get here. So we're at about 10.02 uh, oh, milliamps and now we're about 10.027. So let me go back down. So maybe a seven, six or seven microamp change instead of the 30 or 40 microamp change we were seeing before. So, uh, you know, a bit more stable. So uh, adding that cast code device can improve the stability by increasing the output impedance of the device. Again, nice experiment for you to play along at home with. Again, as we saw from the data sheet, there can be a lot of variation for a given part number and different given device for things like IDSS, and the gate to source uh, you know, cutoff voltage and things like that. So your mileage will certainly vary when you start playing with your own JFETs in these same circuits, but the overall behavior should be about the same. The background videos I mentioned at the beginning, I'll link those down in the uh, video description down below. But I'm also going to give you a link to this application note uh, from Siliconics. And this uh, goes into a bit more detail of the FET uh, current source, current limiter that we've been talking about in this video. Go through some of the math if you're interested in some of that. I tried to avoid that in this particular video. And it does talk about that CAS code configuration and how that improves things. It has a lot of other good information that goes into a lot more detail on this uh, constant current source limiter uh, configuration with the JFET if you want to do your own study. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Learned a little something about you know, JFET current sources and how simple they can be made and some of the good things and bad things about them. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Thanks again as always for watching and we'll see you next time.